Okay. 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 Um, with Jack Goldstein, Matt Francisco. Um, whoops. Okay. And being joined by members of the public um, as they come on. Um, hey, Matt Moran, I see you. Okay. And Yaslin okay. is coming in now. Okay. Ah, okay. 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 Yep. Yaslin, welcome back. Um, let me, um, uh, we've just called the meeting to order. Uh, and so let's uh, get into it. Um, as far as the chair's remarks go, um, I've spoken to, uh, to John first, who is with us at this, um, at this meeting tonight for other reasons, um, about helping us put together, for want of a better term, a playbook of all of our processes um, where, in which we list the steps and the order that the steps should be taken to make sure that regardless what we're doing at any given moment and regardless of the um, familiarity or not of the uh, members of the board, as well as the public, we will be able to lay out at the very beginning of an application, for instance, um, what, the, what the future is gonna look like and, and that everyone will know in terms of of the steps, only obviously not of the outcome and substance. Uh, John's already given me a, a, a good head start on developing it, and um, I will be bringing it and asking for help from uh, from the other board members. This is simply going to be a, um, a summary of the various regulations in practice with which we have to deal. Um, and I think that it will be a good thing to have. It will obviously have to be kept up to date as things change. Um, secondly, I am preparing on my own time a report to you all on the process of the Dockside project, which I've shared with you, I think, um, led to inadequate public input and certainly inadequate intersection in my view with key planning issues such as how we manage tourism and our approved parking policy. Um, this is in keeping with section 111 uh, which it, you know, uh, permits us to look at basically what we think is important to look at um, and I will send it to you all in the hopes that you will uh, find it compelling enough uh, for it to be shared with the Village Board of Trustees um, when it's completed. So I expect to have a draft of that uh, at our next meeting or the meeting after. I don't believe at this point that we have any, that there's much possibility of changing um, the direction of the dockside stabilization project, but I do think it's vitally important for the sake of the future of the village to lay out what the concerns are and how they might be dealt with in future. So um, those are my comments and uh, more to come. Um, we have um, the minutes for the, the first meeting of this year, uh, January 13th, have been sent around to everyone with people's corrections uh, included, made to them. So uh, for those who were at that meeting, well, we have a full complement now. So um, we have a quorum here. But for those who were at that meeting, um, I would like a resolution to approve those minutes and, um, and have it seconded, please. Okay. Okay. 
Um, and any objections? All in favor who can vote? Was, was there a second? Um, yeah, I did. Okay. Right. Thank you. And also, um, just uh, just again, a quick comment. I didn't realize that in order for these minutes to be automatically uh, posted on the village site, I needed to send a signed copy in addition to the fact that we've approved them. So uh, in doing research for tonight uh, and looking back at agendas and looking back at minutes, um, there are none listed. There is, in fact, no drop down uh, uh, for 2022. So that's being corrected. Um, I, I, and these will be listed there. But should you go to look for them, that's the reason why. Um, do any of the members have any reports? No. OK. Um, I think we have no correspondence to deal with. Uh, and so for our, in our old business, uh, we have a um, uh, public hearing this evening that I would like to open now on the uh, application of uh, the Butterfield development to, for a change of use in the as yet unbuilt building one from office space and retail to residential rental space and retail. Um, we voted to hold this public hearing at our February 10th meeting. Uh, the notice, uh, the public notice was drafted and approved on February 11th. And it was, I believe, um, and Matt Moran, who is here from Unicorn, uh, construction um, uh, delivered to the uh, affected community on the 14th of February. That affected community was by the uh, vote of this planning board limited to the property owners and renters in the uh, B4A district. Um, Again, as some background, um, the planning board declared this action a type two unlisted action under CEQA, and uh, we will be undertaking an EAF. And uh, John Hurst uh, first, I'm sorry, John first is preparing a possible resolution for the board to consider uh, in terms of our decision on whether uh, further environmental work needs to be done. Um, also, as required, um, the, because of its proximity within 500 feet of Route 9D, this application was referred to the County Department of Planning for its comments um, on uh, February 18th, and it was approved by the County Department of planning on February 22nd. Um, and so uh, that is the procedural background in which we are going to under uh, which we begin this public hearing. Uh, in looking at the past, it's been conventional for the chair to read the public notice into the record. And so um, I am going to do that now and then we'll turn it over to Matt Moran. Um, to uh, present to the public um, what's being intended here. Uh, okay, um, I, I'm going to skip the part of the public notice which speaks about um, the, the nature of the meeting due to COVID and the laws pertaining to that and just go to in that it is being done by Zoom um, and just go to the substance of this um, and 
the planning board will consider the application by Butterfield Realty LLC for an amendment to the previously approved site plan as per section 134-15A.A .A of the village code to allow a change of use within building one from commercial space to six senior residential units. The subject property is known as tax map 49.5-3-45.1 with an address of 1756 Route 90, Building 1, Cold Spring. The subject property is located within the Medical and Healthcare Facility Mixed Use Zoning District B4A, as well as the village's local historic district. Application materials are available to view on the village website and it gives the, the village address hard copies of the application material materials are available for review in village hall 85 Main Street Cold Spring New York 10516 by appointment only please call the village clerk at 845-265-3611 to make an appointment. Written comment on the application can be delivered to Village Hall or email to the village clerk at VS clerk, VCS clerk at coldspringnewyork.com. The planning board will consider all verbal and or written comments from all person, persons interested in the proposed application in the various manners described above. The planning board will also consider such further relief as it finds necessary, uh, dated February 11, 2022, by order of the planning board of the village of Cold Spring, Jack Goldstein, chairman. So, um, let me just. Uh, so, with that, um, having said that, I would like to turn it over to Matt Moran. Um, so that he can explain to the public who are joining us for this um, what is being proposed. And um, following that, uh, with the board's permission, I will open the conversation to public comment first before the board comments. Um, and so, Matt, I'm going to turn it over to you. You need to unmute, Matt. Okay. No. I can't hear you, Matt. Uh, do you have headphones plugged into your computer? No, we still can't hear you. Nope. I would just try phoning in or um, logging out and logging back in.
Right, I'm letting Matt back in. Okay. Mm, any luck with that? Yes. Much better. Yeah, I don't know. It said I was unmuted, but um, sorry about that. So thanks, Jack. Hello, everyone on the planning board. Hi, John. So um, currently, as part of the original approvals, the site has been built out. There's only one building that remains, which is building one. And building one was slated to be 15,000 square feet. We have no uh, intent to change the building exterior or the square footage of the building. Um, none of the features of the outside, none of the um, um, pavement or curb lines. Uh, the proposal is to leave the ground floor as retail, as originally approved, and the upper floors they were slated to be office. And we propose to replace the upper floor office space with six apartments. And uh, those apartments, we have some parking designated outside for the units at one per unit, plus an additional two, uh, two more than what's uh, uh, required by code. And when you do the net, uh, change the net analysis, we ended up with an additional uh, 16 parking spaces uh, for uh, the project. Um, the, you know, it, it was uh, discussed previously that there had been some a signage uh, where it was uh, shown where back in, uh, you know, uh, I think it was four slots where it said back in parking only. Um, that, that, that comment came from the approvals years ago from the planning board. That wasn't driven by uh, the DOT or anything like that. You know, we have no opposition to removing the signs if that's what the planning board would like, or uh, they can remain. And um, I don't think there's much more than that, uh, you know, really to explain. Any questions? Well, um, what is the state of the site plan at the moment in terms of reflecting? Uh, right. So. Uh, we had a couple of iterations and the last one that we submitted, which was sent to the county uh, designated, uh, you know, showed the, the work area and it showed the, um, some outdoor space that would be committed, uh, you know, per the code for the seniors. Uh, I don't know if I mentioned, but the apartments, they're not just apartments, they're going to be senior apartments that meet all the criteria to, that's in the code for the maximum number of bedrooms and um, um, the age requirements. Um, so, it, uh, and, and part of that was there's, there needs to be provided some um, indoor and outdoor space. So uh, the drawings ultimately will reflect the indoor space requirement and outdoor uh, on the site plan, we've highlighted an area that's down in a recessed courtyard. It's down below street level. It's wrapped by wall. And um, uh, um, so that, that uh, handles that, that requirement. <clears throat> All right. Um, and let's uh, open this up with the board members' permission to the public. Um, this is my first public hearing, so I'm assuming that people are raising their hands um, in order to speak, and if you would identify yourself, um, 
And if it's required, your uh, address, I'm not sure that is required. Uh, and um, and uh, Jeff, I take it that you will um, respond to the requests from the public for for speaking time. Yes, and we just ask that you identify yourself and your address. Okay. All right. Um, first up, Marie Early. Marie Early, Grandview Terrace. I submitted a, a number of questions to the village clerk this afternoon, and I'd like to have those addressed. Does anybody have a copy of those questions? I, I, I doubt it. It was sent to the village clerk oh, this yeah. afternoon. Yeah, it was for it was forwarded to the board. Um, we have. I can pull. I can pull it out. Um, not on the thing. I can get mine. I, yeah, I can I, read mine. I can read it. Too. Yeah, I. I well, can you can read the. Uh, I would read the questions. I mean, you guys don't have to answer them now. It's a public hearing, so you can take comments and you can, if you want to read her questions into the record. Um, so that way everybody knows her questions and then, you know, you, you, you don't have to respond to them. Uh, you're just taking public comment. Okay, so the first question is a statement. Okay. Public hearing includes a short EIF plan dated January 12th, 2022. Can't hear. We can't Sorry. hear very clearly. Marie, you're fading in and out okay, when you turn. Um, so the materials or the short EAF form, uh, the parking table, uh, a revised referral to the planning board dated December, 2021. And, uh, and, and fourth, an application for a building permit dated November 15, 2021, including an application for site plan or subdivision approval dated 124-22, and lastly, an amended site plan dated uh, February 8th, 2022. The third item, which is a revised referral to the planning board, describes the change of use from, quote, previously approved retail slash commercial to mixed use retail slash residential. The question, why is the new use mixed use retail slash residential instead of residential slash sorry, instead of retail slash residential, since the changes to building one are, are for the first floor, for the second floor only, uh, a change from commercial to residential. So why is the term mixed use retail included? Next, um, item number three, which is the revised referral, refers to the date of the building inspector referral as September 1st, 2021. Shouldn't the revised referral be the reference document dated December 1st, 2021, or should both referrals be referenced? Next, item one, which is the short EAF. Question two in the short EAF, which was answered yes, does not list the agency or agencies and permits or approvals required. I would think that should be filled in. Item number three, which is the revised referral to the planning board identifies chapter 134, section 11A. This section, 134, 11A, deals with zoning district B3, not zoning district B4A. The reference appears to be incorrect. Section, 115, uh, section 15A should be the referral. Um, in addition, at the last meeting, uh, the last planning board meeting, additional materials were requested of the applicant have they been received and will they be put on the village website? And lastly, the, um, I believe that um, the homeowners association or something similar to that is identified as the approving board for applicants um, to uh, uh, occupy um, um, a, an apartment in um, the B4A district. Since these apartments, these six apartments in building one are not part of the homeowners association and I would think have no relationship to the homeowners association who will be responsible on an ongoing basis for confirming 
that applicants meet the requirements for residents in a senior uh, senior housing area. That's my list of questions. Thank you. Thanks, Marie. Um, so uh, next, please. Jeff, do we have anyone and else? Nobody else is indicating they have come up. Oh, Allison. I, um, I'm i just going to repeat, I'm Allison Anthoyne. I live at 25 Butterfield Road, apartment 212. Um, I am uh, uh, repeating what I said at a, in, before at a meeting a couple of uh, meetings ago that, uh, but now we, um, I personally uh, think that this is a, this change of use is better for the residents of the Butterfield complex that will have less traffic and uh, we, it, we uh, Maria Hardman is also on this uh, in the meeting and I um, have, uh, no, have uh, reached out to on an informal basis to the listserv we've created for the resident for the owners. Uh, we have received no objection, no uh, questions that we've answered, like, for example, are these apartments part of the homeowners association? No, they're not. But everybody is, uh, there's been no objection from anybody uh, who is on the, uh, among the owners at, uh, at Butterfield. All right. Thank you. Um, anyone else in the public uh, wishing to, to comment or ask questions on this application? Oh. Bob Flaherty. Hello, everybody. Uh, Bob Flaherty, I'm owner of uh, Unit uh, B 112, and um, I have no objection to the change of the use whatsoever. I agree. I think it's going to be less traffic there than it would be for retail, and I, I think the demand for uh, the senior living is necessary. To be quite honest with you, it's in, it's in demand, and I think it's a, it's a the positive thing. Okay. Thank you. Thank you, Bob. Thank you, Bob. Do you have a question? Anybody have a question? I don't know. I don't know what I'm wondering. Do you want to ask Marie? Marie, your hand is raised. Is that raised? So, so the question is, I didn't hear it mentioned before, but have all the return receipt request receipts been received by the planning board? By the planning board? Jeff, you can, Jeff, you can, we, we, Diane forwarded them to, Diane forwarded them Jeff. to Jeff. Uh, I have to go back and check for my emails. It's not the return receipt, it's the certified, the stamp certified receipts that we're interested in. You can't see. So Jeff, you have both the evidence so Jeff, of mailing as well as, the, mailing, as well as the, the any return cards that came back. I do have return do cards have that, return have come back. that have come back. Um, I do not have the proof of mail. Well, oh, you don't have the proof. Or it of could, mail. it could be. I will say it could be in my emails. Okay, I'm not aware of it. I have to check. I'm not aware of it. I have to check. All right. Excuse me. Excuse me. Can I come have some? I can have some quiet for the minute. Quiet for the minute. Um, I think it's the, um, the boardroom. The, the boardroom. Um, let's um, continue. Let's continue with uh, public comment on this. And Matt, we can turn to board questions um, when the public has finished. I see that there's a hand raised, uh, Celestine. It's under Celestine's uh, Benjamin's. Uh, identification, but there seems to be a group of people in that room. So I would like to hear from them if they're next up. And yes, they are next and they're up. They just need to unmute. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. Can I talk? I talk? Yes. Uh, yes. My, yes. My concern is the disabled uh, people of the area. There are going to be um, 
senior citizen housing, correct? And I wanted to make sure that all the sidewalks have, um, have handicapped access to the road so they can cross. Right now in, in um, on, off Route 9, D in um, Cold Spring by, what's that street? Oh, yeah. By what? Pauling. By Pauling Avenue, there's no dip in the road. I wanted to make sure if they did this, that there was a complete fix that right now. Thank you. Uh, may we have your address? We have your address? Yes, my address is 22 Butterfield Road, 201A at Cold Spring, New York. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. And any other comments? Any other comments from that group? From that group. Um, well, all right. You mentioned uh, a Joanne Siebold, 25 Butterfield Road. You mentioned the um, uh, the maximum number of, of bedrooms per apartment. Could you explain that? Uh, do you know how many? And um, the parking that is existing will be expanded upon or not? Uh, I, you said that there was enough parking for DOT uh, and addi two additional, but um, uh, will there be more? Especially if it's retail on the first floor, there might be the necessity for more. That's the end of my question. Thank you very much. Thank you very much. Um, anyone else from anyone that? Anyone else from that group? We really would like to get us public input. And Celestine, you really need to. If there's no more people there's speaking, no more we gotta mute the uh, the device again because it's an echo. Yeah. Okay. Thank you. Thank you. Okay. Um, anyone else uh, from the public um, waiting to speak, Jeff? There is not. Okay. Um, then um, I'd like to turn to the board members for their comments and questions. And we'll begin with, with Matt, who, who clearly has a question. Go ahead, Matt. Well, there's a, there's a few things that we asked for that we still don't have. I mean, I, I think it's partly Marie's question as well. I think it was about a month ago, we had asked about the declaration um, enforcing the B4A senior housing requirements, you know, 50, one, you know one member of 55, no more than two occupants, no, no occupants less than under the age of 18. Um, that was all done um, and the EAF was done with the homeowners association as the enforcing agency. Um, so there was a question on the last meeting that John was at that, you know, that we would look at the, that they, that the two attorneys would look at the declaration and ensure that that requirement would transfer to the managing agent of these rental apartments. Secondly, what we had asked for, which I have not seen is also a site plan that shows the entrances for the rental and the commercial units, because we don't really understand a site plan without seeing that. Um, there are things like, you know, ingress, egress, you know, um, handicap accessibility, garbage, you know, elevator lobbies. So we, all we have is really just, you know, parking spaces shown on an existing site plan. We don't show anything that's changing the, you know, the entrance or even showing where the entrance is for the rental units. The commercial units, obviously, we understand to be the front. We assume there's an entrance in the rear as well, or at least we would hope so with respect to the uh, handicap ramp in the back. Um, have we have we received any of those? And also to to the earlier question, when Jeff was saying, obviously, it's, we need to confirm that there's evidence of mailing for notification. Um, you know, the the green and white receipt is sent in just to prove is proof of mailing. The green card may or may not come back. That's up to whether or not the applicant signed for it yet. Obviously, the the um, not the applicant, the recipient, the applicant can't take responsibility for whether or not people pick up their, you know, their mail from the post office. But uh, the proof of mailing is obviously critical to make sure that we've notified everybody uh, that we agreed to notify, right? That the planning board asked to notify. 
Um, and I think that's about it. Those, but, but again, we haven't seen those things. Those things have not been posted on the village website. Thanks, Matt. Mm -hmm. um, any other comments from board members? No? Okay. Um, I think clearly that there is, uh, and I'm happy to listen to other views, there is clearly reason to keep this hearing open um, for at least another two weeks, which would make it when, Jeff? Um, 24th. The 24th, thank you, uh, the March 24th meeting in order for these questions to be answered, all of which seem to me to be good um, and necessary answers to have. Good questions and necessary answers to have before moving on. So um, is without objection from any of the board members, John, it's a simple resolution. Um, do it for us. Um, you could just make a, a motion to continue the public hearing to a date certain, which would be uh, March 24th. Okay. Then um, I would like such a motion from the floor. And it's ask if anybody wants to discuss that. <laughs> Does it have to be uh, on the table first before we discuss? It, it can be. I mean, a lot of times they they put it on the table. Sometimes you don't. It, it's it's very informal, but okay. Should, you know, okay. before you make you know make get some feedback from the other board members. But I I, I agree with you and Matt. Um, there are some things. So Matt Moran, I mean, yes. Um, I, I do need the declaration. I, I sent an email the day after the meeting last month or that that night. Um, Jeff and you need to figure out the proof of mailings. Because mm -hmm. if there's something wrong, then you need to remail and you'll have enough time for two weeks from now uh, if there's okay. something wrong. So you guys need to figure that out quickly. And Jeff, just confirm with me um, if it needs to be remailed, if everything is fine. Um, and then uh, the plans. Yeah, we do need some revised plans. I think, you know, to show the pedestrian access and circulation, how it's going to work. So is that something you can get? Um, yeah, yes. I mean, uh, regarding the declarations, I thought perhaps uh, Steve had worked that out with you. No. Nope. Um, regarding regarding the, um, the 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 building has always been designed where you had commercial on the ground floor. I mean, resident. Right. I'm sorry, retail. And and the upper floors had access from the back of the building, which the renderings, same as the originally approved renderings that is still the entrance okay. for the upper floor so i don't know so i would just resubmit the the if nothing's changing on the outside then resubmit the renderings so that way the board members have an idea of what it's going to look like mm -hmm. as far as the receipts right. as far as the receipts um diane has sent them over she said there was only three cards that uh, we did not get back. One of them was the U.S. Post Office. I don't know who the, the you know the two others uh, were. Um, so that's what I have. Okay, Yaslin, did you have a comment or question? Yeah, I, d I had a quick comment. Um, I think in terms of the site plan, what we're referring mm -hmm. to, um, Matt, the last meeting that I was on when we talked about some mm -hmm. recommendations for you um, in terms of showing location of parking yep. or yep. concerns about the back end stuff, right? Right. Those are the things. Right. Um, and that was, that was everything. submitted. Okay. That was submitted. Okay. You know, we highlighted the parking spaces. We numbered them. We had, it shows that we were providing signage for those spaces. We provided an additional two spaces over code. We highlighted the location for the outdoor space, for the seniors. Uh, I, you know, I don't know what more to give you. I, I, I don't. Matt Francisco, did you get those plans? Is that addressed? No, that, you, we still have yeah, more yeah. questions. No, we're not, 
we're not asking for the existing elevations and just to show parking. What we're saying is we understand you're, you're not changing the fenestration, the doors or the windows, all that's gonna change. What mm -hmm. has changed and why we are all here is because of a change of use. And in mm -hmm. that change of use, the planning board needs to understand the use of the building, right? So there's going to be a separate entrance, I would assume for the rental units, right? That is going to be blocked off from the commercial. That is a change. And no. that is something that we no. don't, how is it not no. a change? There, there was never- Nothing, nothing changes. The retail has still always been accessed from the lower floor and the upper floors have always been accessed from the back of the building. And the doors haven't changed. All right, so then, 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 then we should see that on a plan, right? So you're saying that the, the, the rental unit entrance is going to be in the back? Which is same as the original approved documents. Same as the original elevation. Well, let's, yeah, no, no, it's, well, it's not the same because it's a different use, but that's fine. Um, we didn't understand that. I don't know that anybody else did. I certainly didn't. Um, so if the entrance for the, so there's, a, there's going to be a lobby in the rear that is only for the rental occupants, correct? Correct, and there was a lobby for uh, office space, which was always at the rear. It doesn't change. There's no, we don't connect the two floors. Interesting. All right, so I guess, and then anything, anything anybody else has, I mean, with respect to kind of understanding, obviously, we, we also asked about elevations too, because it's kind of hard to understand what's happening. Um, but those would just be the existing then if you already have right, them. Right. So I think part of my, my question regarding why, or I guess my, from my perspective, part of the reason for this, um, it's not just a formality. I think part of it is just to understand that, you know, with these units um, as they're going to be built um, in, in that space, that there's just, um, that they all make, it all makes sense uh, with relation to where the egress is, where the windows are. Is that, is that what you're getting at, Matt? Um, is that why we need to see just kind of, it's not purely a formality. It's kind of like, we kind of just need to see the plan to understand that it works for the change of use, or is it? Um, Matt, not? if uh, Matt Moran, do you have the plans that you submitted? Maybe you can pull yes. them up and share them. So well, maybe I don't, them. they were submitted at one point. I, at one point I submitted the entire HDRB package. <laughs> uh elevations site plan and nothing is changing uh, were those was that the ones that were labeled the um february 8th of this year that there was an amended site plan did site plan yeah i'm looking at that yeah, yeah. listen so, uh, I, I will say that it was my understanding that uh oh are you putting it up okay. I, I put that up okay mm -hmm. Um, it was my understanding, as Matt Moran is describing it, that he had responded to the questions of the board um, in that there was no change of the physical plant, basically, um, mm -hmm. and that they were simply adapting the internal space to the new use. I do think Matt Moran, that it would have been helpful to have this up here, this being a public hearing, mm -hmm. you know, as part of the presentation, because I'm familiar with it and other board members are familiar with it. Right. Mm -hmm. but the public is not necessarily familiar with it. So um, I think that would have been helpful. Um, to me, I am not sure that you do have much more to do. The right outstanding issue that for me that I am not sure that I'm seeing here is the, uh, the public use percentage on the inside. Um, the hatched area, uh, you'll see uh, for the outside. The inside, the architect, it will be on the plans and the building inspector will verify. Okay, but this is, this is for me what is outstanding in terms of this site plan. I'm just letting you know. Um, so uh, I would like to see that before at the next meeting uh, on the site plan so that 
I mean, we'd like to see the approval and then have the art, then engage the architect to, you know, pay him to design it based upon the approval. It will comply. The building inspector will make sure it complies. I shouldn't have to, you know, design the inside of the building. I don't think, I, I guess it's the, oh yeah. Uh, Jack, are you asking about the, the communal space on the inside needs to be indicated? Or are we saying that we want more clarification of where the entryways are and stuff? No, no, no. I, I think, I think that's it's sufficient. Really as Matt Moran has explained, the mm -hmm. entrances are going to remain have stayed the same. Yeah. Just a different kind of person walking through them. Okay. What I felt that we had asked for was, in fact, a, um, a, a visualization of the internal communal space. Mm -hmm. um, so it will be up to the board whether it is satisfied with the representations that this will be approved by the you know the building department john is that the is 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 that the planning boards um is that for their purview for their review to oh. review the inside of building drawings well i i, I think from i mean i'm i'm not Speaking as a planning board member, but I would kind of help if you just even if just sketch, you know, where the door is, and and where the community space may may be, so they can kind of get a flow. I don't think you have to do floor plans, but exactly. I, I okay, think just to sketch something, it doesn't have to. No, be, pro no problem. I'll put an approximate you know, box nobody's, inside. Nobody's, nobody's gonna hold. I don't think anyone's gonna hold you to it because yeah, you're gonna mm -hmm. have to comply with code once the building inspector looks at it. And then mm -hmm. you'll have to, you know, get whatever variances if you don't meet it. But I, I think from a flow perspective, I'm having a hard time understanding where people are going to walk in. Where's the lobby? Where's the 5%, which is a code requirement? Mm -hmm. uh, and how is it going to flow with the rest of the rest of the units? But more so the outside door and the 5%, you know, right. where's where's that kind of I, to play? Okay. I mean, I will show the doors, which are on the renderings. I will show a door indication on on the uh, on this plan here and maybe just show where the you know where the where you guys are planning on putting the, the five percent community space mm -hmm. and, and you know I, I don't think it doesn't have to be detailed no problem. architectural floor plan but as even a sketch I, I think from my perspective I think it would help understand because I'm really having a hard time wrapping my head around this as well. And that's okay. why that's why we had intentionally why I had intentionally used the term of just a block plan, right? Okay. You're basically just okay. showing blocks. It's not an architect. It's basically just saying here because ultimately, as John is saying in different words, you need to know how the site plan works, right? What you mm -hmm. know, where what is happening where and where is it going? All right. I, I I think we understand one another. I don't think that there's a huge gap mm -hmm. between what we would like to see here. And so I don't think we need to belabor this anymore. Um, and we appreciate uh, your time here, Matt Moran and Matt. Yep, Friends. thank you. Yep, in kind, thank you. And uh, we'll, if there are no other comments from the board members, we will look forward to seeing you um, at our March 24th meeting. Okay. Thank okay. you. Yep. Oh. Yep. Bye. Thank you and good thank night. Thank you. Night. And um, I would also like to thank the public who attended this uh, this meeting. We will um, we will be sure that the questions that have been posed are answered at the next board meeting. So we look forward to your attendance at that as well. I, uh, will will there be another uh, announcement of the of this meeting on the twenty fourth? Um, will I need to will, will the Zoom information be the same? Yes, the Zoom okay. information will be the same. Well, yes. I don't I don't think we have to re-notice the meeting as long as we have, but it will be on the agenda certainly, Bob. Okay. As also, also Jeff. Um, if you could forward Marie's comments to Matt Moran, 
It sounds like the planning board members have it, and I don't have a copy of it either. Well, do. I'm not sure I have a copy of it, but anyway. Um, all right. So thank you all very much. And if we can now move on to the second item on our agenda. Uh, before doing so, I'd like to introduce Timothy Rasick, is it? Hi, uh, Tim Rasick. Rasick, thank you, who is the architect for the applicants of 40 Main Street. Uh, the applicants themselves had a conflict this evening and so um, cannot attend this meeting. Um, but Mr. Rasick has been authorized to represent them and to answer questions that are within his purview um, regarding this application. Uh, 40 Main um, has been um, uh, uh, on this board's uh, agenda um, for quite some time. Um, I sent you all in advance the uh, resolution um, from September 23rd, um, which provided a, from the planning board, which provided a partial approval of, or rec no, we don't recommend, provided a, shared a partial approval of parking waivers for the retail uh, portion of this development. Um, which is a mixed use retail and office space, commercial space development. And I sent you in advance, um, just to refresh your own memories, part of the planning board resolution was to encourage a discussion between the applicant and the village board of trustees um, to engage in a conversation uh, regarding a, an agreement that would uh, resolve concerns about the impact of this application on um, Main Street parking uh, and, and yet fulfill the applicant's requirement for off-street parking. Um, the Village Board of Trustees and the applicants have been negotiating um, this agreement and um, have been making substantial progress uh, toward it. Um, but the applicant has uh, decided to apply to us for uh, yet again, a partial site plan approval, which would permit them to um, start construction on the retail portion of this project while the terms uh, regarding the commercial off-street parking um, are finalized. Um, based on that, uh, and this, was, this came to us uh, on Monday, this request, um, I asked John if he would prepare a draft resolution that set forth the issues and the history of this. And I think it would just be good for me to read into the record. You all received this from John and an amended, um, an amended uh, version of it later today. Um, and I think it would explain a lot if I simply read the resolution into the record and then we take questions. So if that's all right with everybody, I will proceed to do that. This is a draft resolution. And again, I will read you the pertinent uh, portions of it. Um, Resolution of the Planning Board of the Village of Cold Spring granting partial site plan approval. Um, whereas the Planning Board of the Village of Cold Spring has received an application from the 40 Main Street CS LLC, the applicant, to allow the reconfigura reconfiguration of an existing 6,564 square foot building in order to include 1,068 square feet of retail space 
and 5,496 square feet of office space without expanding the existing footprint of the building for real property situated at section 48.12, block two, lot four in the village of Cold Spring, said lot also being known as 40 Main Street, the property. And whereas, sorry, and whereas the property lies within the village's B1 general business zoning district, as well as the village's historic district. And whereas the applicant has already obtained approval for any exterior modifications to this proposal from the village's historic district review board. And whereas on September 23rd, 2021, the planning board opened a public hearing on this amended site plan application, which public hearing was continued on October 28, 2021 and closed on November 11, 2021. And whereas there were limited comments at the public hearings with most comments centered on the potential off-street parking concerns because of the proposed office use aspect. And whereas on November 11, 2021, the planning board classified this action as a type two action under CEQA because the applicant is repurposing existing space and no further environmental review under CEQA is necessary. And whereas the applicant will need a waiver to pay a fee in lieu of providing the necessary off-street parking spaces from the Village Board of Trustees pursuant to section 134-18.E uh, paren 7. And whereas on November 22nd, 2021, the Planning Board issue a letter to the Village Board of Trustees paren BBOT recommending the waiver in connection with the proposed retail aspect of the proposal, but not recommending the waiver for the office aspect of the proposal unless the BBOT and the applicant can find mutually agree can find a mutually agreeable solution like the use of the fair street municipal lot on Mondays through Thursdays and whereas given the planning board's concerns regarding the off street parking and proposed office aspect um, the planning board reserved its final decision on the amended site plan application pending resolution of the off street parking issue identified in its November 22, 2021 letter. And whereas on December 14, 2021, the Village Board of Trustees adopted a resolution approving the payment of fees in lieu of providing off street parking resulting from the proposed change of use. And whereas the Village Board of Trustees agreed to accept the $250 payment per required six spaces for the retail related aspect. Uh, and whereas the Village Board of Trustees agreed in concept to lease spaces within the Fair Street Mayor's Park municipal parking lot to the applicant to allow for adequate long-term parking for the applicant subject to agreeing to major terms and executing a parking agreement with the applicant. And whereas the applicant is now requesting to move forward with a partial amended site plan approval for the retail aspect only, while the village board of trustees and the applicant confirm agreement on the final terms for the above mentioned parking agreement covering the office use aspect and leave an and in there john and whereas the applicant understands that it will have to return to the planning board for a separate partial amended site plan approval for the office aspect once the off street parking issue is resolved. And whereas the planning board has reviewed the aforesaid application, the environmental assessment form submitted therewith, the submissions made by the applicant, the proposed plans and resolution from the village board of trustees, as well as public comments and now, therefore, it is hereby resolved 
that the planning board hereby determines that the proposed site plan with respect to the retail portion only meets all general site plan objectives set forth in section 134-9D and section 134-27A of the village code and it is further resolved that the application of 40 Main Street CS LLC for partial site plan approval of the retail aspect only as shown in the plans last, and there is a blank there, John, um, mm -hmm. involving the real property situated at section 48.12, block two, lot four, in the village of Cold Spring, said lot also being known as 40 Main Street Cold Spring is hereby granted subject to the following conditions. One, making the required waiver payment for the six off street parking spaces not being provided as previously determined by the village board of trustees pursuant to section 134-18.E7 and subject to payment of all outstanding escrow consultant fees to the village of Cold Spring as may be required in connection with the application. Um, by order of the planning board of the village of Cold Spring, New York, and it would be dated today, March 10th, signed by the chair. So um, I know that's a lot to absorb, but it was sent to everyone in advance for your consideration. Um, and um, I, John is here to answer questions from the board about this rather than, um, as I say, going over the full record <clears throat> in more detail. I think the resolution is fairly self-evident and that questions that Mr. Rasset can answer, he is here to answer um, regarding this. So um, are there questions? This is now um, an, um, I would like to have this resolution um, put on the table um, and um, seconded um, and then discuss it uh, with any questions we may have. Um, putting it on the table, as you know, does not mean that it will pass, uh, but at least according to Robert's rules, you should only really discuss a resolution um, that's on the table. So uh, may I have a resolution from one of the board members, please, that we consider this, and a second from another board member. Or I will make the resolution that we consider it. Um, and if we can, if I can have a second from one of the board members, please. Yeah, I second. Thank you, yes. So um, I throw this now open to questions from the board members. As I say, I think it is self-explanatory uh, pending the uh, necessary agreement on the larger portion of the parking waiver issue connected to the commercial uh, use of this property. The applicant is asking for a basically a partial go ahead so they can begin construction on the retail. Now, does that pretty much say it, John? Yes. Okay. The, only, the only question I have in looking at this is, um, how feasible is it to do this sort of uh, partial approval given construction and you know dependencies maybe that one area has over the other and you know is this really a, a, a smart thing to do um for that you know in general I, I just that's the only hesitation that I would have you know and kind of thinking thinking about it like on the surface it sounds great which is why I gave the second because it allows progress to be made which is what we want but on the other hand, you know, I do have questions about you know, just the feasibility of giving a partial approval and, you know, how you do the order of operations and things for construction and things like that. Right. So that's a good question. And so um, my understanding is the building inspector is aware of this and the building inspector had no issues. 
Okay, that's good. Um, and if I could also speak to it, the, the two retail spaces are really isolated from the others, so they can be constructed independently of the office portion. Okay. And I could pull up a plan to show you if that would be helpful. Would yeah. that? I think that would, or if you could send it, um, would be Here, great. I can, actually, I can share my screen. Okay. Um, so let's see. Um, so uh, this is, sorry, I'll just zoom out. This is the space as it is currently. And it, there's sort of three bays here. And the two retail spaces are this bay and this bay. So as you see, they can build the demising wall here and a demising wall here and build the interior of these spaces and leave the rest of it until we get approval for that. Yeah. And so the building department looked at it, you know, because, you know, having done crazy work and things like that on homes, I know sometimes with electric and plumbing and all of these little details, you know, it's hard to partition, you know, things out there. So if the building department has looked at it and they're okay with it, I trust them. Yeah, you're right. There's going to have to be close coordination between the building yeah. inspector and the architect slash contractor. Yeah. Matt, was your hand up? Yeah. And I mean, to further expand in a slightly different direction that Yaslin is talking about, when the approvals, when the work gets ahead of the approvals, it's not just the correct sequencing of construction and major, you know, and base mechanicals and all of that. It's that you know what if what if things don't proceed as planned? I, the the you know the the elephant in the room here is for me is why is this partial approval needed? The village board has had this information since November, right? You know, so I mean, we it, 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 were were we to approve this and they proceed, I feel in many ways we are holding hands with them, and there's it's it's somewhat implied that this approval is coming. Well, well, what if it doesn't come? And they've now built out these two retail spaces, right? And they rely to their detriment on our partial approval. I, I don't love that. Right, well, I think the applicant has to assume the risk here. Um, you know, and just so you know, just within the last day or two, the, you know, the, the village board and the applicant have actually come to an agreement on the major terms. Uh, but since it was so recent, um, you know, uh, we've, we've kind of felt like that would have probably been throwing too much at, at this planning board. Um, Couldn't that just be hurried along then and do a pro and do a correct, you know, approval? It's a single parcel, right? You know, so I mean, it is a it is a single site plan. Mm -hmm. I <clears throat> I will say, Matt, that um, having seen a uh, version of the progress that's being made. I was not comfortable um, moving ahead with the full approval. And the applicant felt it was very important for their own reasons um, to begin work on this e immediately. Um, and there is, while well, I think the progress is substantial, um, I, there is no guarantee of when uh, it will be finalized. And so we are responding to, um, to an application uh, that involves risk for the um, the uh, applicant, it's true, but it's a choice that they are making. I think that the resolution um, oh, okay, uh, we're we, we can, you know what, um, we can add a condition and put in language that the applicant is proceeding at their own risk and that this partial approval of the retail aspect in no way guarantees either implied or one, implied or implied or right. otherwise. Right. Yes. Yeah. So we can put that language in the conditions so it's there. 
and it certainly doesn't imply that the applicant will enter into a parking agreement with the village board of trustees, nor does it imply that the planning board will eventually, you know, approve the office use. Does that make everyone feel a little more comfortable? I think that strengthens the resolution. I, I think it's in there at the moment, but I think that strengthens it. And um, I don't think that, is there an objection do you think, Mr. Rasik? Um, no, I think, I think the owners would be fine with that. Um, the, the reason why they are asking for the partial approval is they have a tenant, but you know, a prospective tenant who would like the space at a certain time. And if they're afraid they'll lose that tenant, uh, if they're not able to do the space for the retail portion and you know they've been carrying the building for some time and have no income so it's a it's been a burden okay um, um just just a um a question how far are we uh with the agreement uh between the village and uh the the owner and uh you know how far are we from your um, general planning for the planning board to approve and so on. Um, I, I think, you know, I would understand uh, it is a need for the owner to start business as soon as possible because, you know, after the COVID and so on, this has been here for quite a bit. But also I agree with the board members saying uh, you start partial work uh, meanwhile, there are other things that's going on. It 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 doesn't seem to be um, very. Uh, uh, it's it's not wholesome yet. Uh, so my question is, how far are we from the the uh, the whole thing getting ready? That your agreement with the trustees, board of trustees, and 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 so on. So, right. so if so... you do if you do wait, how long do you need to wait? in order to get the whole thing start. Right, uh, so we, we literally had a conference call yesterday with the mayor and the applicant's attorney. And like, as of yesterday afternoon, we kind of agreed to the, we, we agree, they agreed to the major terms. Okay. Um, so, you know, so then, it, yeah, it's so, still a few weeks away. So probably not the next meeting, maybe the meeting after, I don't know, but you know, who knows? And, and it sounds like, you know, they, they have a tenant, probably can't wait that long. Right. And then in that case, I, 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 I think I would agree with the uh, uh, terms put in, just say the applicants will do something at their own risk or, or something like that so they can start. Because we all know that, you know, when you have a business, it, it is everybody's bleeding right now. And, uh, you know, if we could... Uh, if we could see that this thing goes uh, forward um, smoothly and and uh, and you know legally and and everything else, um, I would I would uh, support the the partial. Well, thank you for the comments. Anyone else? Yaslin had to to leave us, by the way, um, so that should be noted um, in the uh, in the minutes. Um, any other comments, Lara? Yeah, I, I don't know. I don't, um, yeah, I don't really have any comments. I think, I think the, I think I agree that there should be uh, the caveats that um, were discussed. Um, okay. All right. Well, with the understanding that the resolution will reflect mass concerns and as expressed by John in terms of making it clear that this is not an explicit or implicit um, commitment of approval. And with the understanding that Mr. Rasik has shared with us that the um, segregation of these areas architecturally, physically um, is a doable. Um, I, I can read, I just wrote something up for an okay. additional condition. I can okay. read that to the board. Yeah. Um, yes, please. Yeah. So, uh, so this would be the third condition applicant. 
understands and acknowledges it is proceeding at its own risk and that this partial approval for the retail use in no way guarantees or even implies either one, that the village board of trustees will enter into a parking agreement or two, that the planning board will approve the office use aspect. Okay. Does that sound good to you, Matt? Matthew, Matt? Yeah, I think that's good. Okay. Thanks, thank you. Mara? I, I had one question. So um, I'm curious if this is one tenant for both spaces where the entry um, to the spaces is, is it through the center um, uh, garage door or through so, one or, yeah, so I guess, I guess I'm only here. asking that insofar as it affects how this central lobby area is actually part of the approval and how that might affect a future approval. I don't know if that makes sense what I'm asking. Yes, um, so to answer it, there, there are two retail spaces here and here. They're accessed from the street. Yeah. There's a door here and a door here. Um, the, the garage door that's here is actually the entry to what will be the office space in the future. Um, so the, the center space is independent of the two retail spaces on either side. Okay. Okay. Um, well, with the addition then of that um, um, condition that John just uh, read to us, uh, do we, we take a roll call vote on this? I, uh, is that correct, John? Because I see there's room for one on the resolution. Yeah, I would. So, you, you know, so if somebody has to make a motion to uh, adopt the resolution with the um, with the additional condition as noted by myself, and then you know somebody has to second it, and then yes, I would do a roll call. Okay. And Tim, just so, you guys so do that, hold on. Um, what? Tim, what's the date of the latest plans? Um, this plan uh, is um, 080421. And these were the plans that were revised to include the parking table as per the board's request. Okay. Sorry, Matt, go ahead. Yeah, no, so moved. Matt's moved uh, to approve this resolution. Uh, we need a second. Sue? Yes. Okay. Um, so let's take a uh, roll call vote here. Okay. Uh, I'm, uh, God, I will. Okay, Matt Francisco? Aye. Goslin Daniels? Lara Eldon? Aye. Sue Myers? Aye. And Chair Jack Goldstein? Aye. All right then. Well, thank you very much, Tim, for being with us. Uh, thank you to the board. And uh, we will see what the next step is. Okay, so I will revise this and, and I'll just get it out right now and tonight. And so as nobody has any objections, then Jack, you can sign it. And then once it's signed, Jeff, you have to file it in the clerk's office and make sure that uh, Tim and uh, the applicant obtain a copy. Of it. Yep. Will do. Okay, thank you very much. Thank you. Um, all right, so now let's, uh, can you uh, release the screen here? Thank you, thank you. Um, um, okay, um, is there, Jeff, I need to talk to you about setting up a um, electronic signature for me. Okay. Okay. Um, I'm happy to do it if I do it at, if you just tell me how at my end I do it. Okay. But I, I don't have one on, you know, yeah. you, okay. 
Yeah, uh, come see me tomorrow or Monday. And okay, okay, it it will help expedite things. Um, is there any new business? Hearing none. Um, anyone in the public still with us who would like to comment? Uh, hearing none. I any board business to be done. Hearing none, I would like. A, re uh, uh, a resolution to adjourn. So, so moved. Uh, who is that? Matthew. Mm -hmm. Okay. And a second. Second. Lara. Okay. And uh, all in favor? Aye. 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 All opposed? Zero. And um, it passes unanimously with four members present. All right, everyone, thank you very much for your um, attention to this. Um, I think we got a lot accomplished tonight and um, I'm, uh, I'm trying to learn as fully as I can the ins and outs of some of the way things have been done and uh, are required to be done. So I appreciate your patience. And we'll see you in two weeks, okay? Thank good night. Good night, night. everybody. And thank you, John, very much. Oh, my pleasure. Okay.